If you love something enough, you will let it kill you. So today's question comes from an epileptic lifter who also does jujitsu, who wants to know, yo, Elliot, what should I do? I go into these epileptic fits and seizures uh, in the middle of weightlifting and rolling, bro. Uh, what do you know? You could die. And so you're putting yourself in ri at risk every time you go and you roll and you lift. Uh, because you could be doing a snatch and it makes its way almost over your head and then decapitates you when you go into a fit. And you could be rolling with somebody and they're about to slam your ass and you have no tension in your body, no protection. You land on your shoulder and break your neck. So this shit can kill you. And I'm sure you're aware of that. You're asking me a question because you want my perspective on it and I'll do you even better. I'll share with you a story. A story that supports my way of life. I like this story. So when I first started Strongman, maybe in 2005, uh, I was training with Tom Mitchell, who was like the Florida State Chairman of Strongman. And he was friends with a very prominent strongman by the name of Jesse Marunde. If you get over to Strongman, you know who he was. He was on the world's strongest stage, and he was friends. And so he'd come down to Florida, and he trained with my coach. Uh, I never actually got to meet him, but he was like legendary in our small circle of strongmen way back then. Jesse died. Jesse Marunde, big hero strongman, leader of so many, with the forum for strongmen, died. He collapsed and died. But the story is so poetic. He doesn't just die, right? People just die. He let strong man kill him. And it's such a glorious way to go out. Think about suicide bombers. They're going to get to their heaven, <laughs> right? Same thing with Jesse. So the story goes that he was doing one of his crazy bro workouts, strong man workouts, and he was a tough trainer. He trained really, really hard. And as so many of us do at the end of a real strong beating, lifting stones, flipping tires, and doing all the crazy shit we do, he laid down on the cold, cool gym floor, just starfish, bang, right? I've done that. And he closed his eyes and never got up. That's it. He died. Had a, an amazing workout, laid on the floor, cooled off, and left his body. That's a man that let the thing that he loved kill him. And there's something to it. There's something compelling about that. I don't know about you, but when I was much younger, meaning like crazier, I played football. And I remember being on the football kickoff team and I had this mindset where I would destroy myself if, I, if, if it needed be for me to run down and smash open a wedge of offensive linemen, like throw your body into something, bang, with no, no thought for my health or that my body may collapse or I'd get a concussion like every kid does today. I'm sure I've got thousands of them, but we didn't think about it. We were just making ourselves sacrifices for something that we thought was fucking amazing. Napoleon said that men will die for ribbons. So what is this? What's going on here? If you ever get a chance to read David Dita's famous book, The Way of the Superior Man, he makes a very interesting distinction between men and women. Uh, there's many of them, of course, but one of which is how we relate in the sexual act, but also in life. Men want completion. We rush to a completion. Women want communion. That's why a lot of times men are in premature ejaculating and a woman is just, look, I'm just trying to get to know you. I'm trying to warm up to you, right? Totally different genital organs, totally different nature. And so this rush to completion that is natural within men that would cause us to subject ourselves to imminent death, right? If you want to do epileptic jujitsu, go for it and die gloriously. But you see this in all of our little behaviors, from video games to suicide. When you're playing a video game, you're not satisfied until you beat the boss. You cross the level, you achieve, you overcome, you come to a completion, right? 
there's no, if it's not gamified in the game, then there's no fun because there's no completion of levels. I mean, we do this in everything, but just think about video games and how you're experiencing it there, but also suicide. Women don't kill themselves. Women pretend to kill themselves so that somebody will come and talk to them and they can then have communion. Men actually kill ourselves because, well, completion, right? There's, there's an addiction, there's a draw. I think Freud called it the death instinct that draws us towards completion as a man, very masculine. And I would say that it cover, colors absolutely everything that we do, especially if we're generative men, if we're loving men, because of women. When you give your essence to a woman, you ejaculate in a woman, you orgasm with a woman, the French call it le petite muerte. Muerte sounds like mort, mortality, right? Mortician. Death, it's a tiny death, le petite mort. And so this, like, the thing that makes us do most of what we do, which is chasing women, chasing sex, playing with our dicks on pornography screens and, and all these things, right? Like the sex drive itself is a form of seeking death. And here's where it gets generative. Here's where it's elevated. Here's where that, you know, what I was saying before in terms of our, our instinct for death is so fucking noble. Death on a cross. Hear me out. Family. Woman. Now, if you give your seed to a woman, a part of you is dying, but not unfruitfully, unless you blow your load in a bag or she's sterile. You're blowing that load to give life. There's a part of you that dies. There's a part of the woman that dies in, 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 in order to give this life. And so children, there's a whole lot of biological loss there from the man's seed, but also the, what they, say, the, they say that the daughters steal the beauty from their mother. I got three daughters. My wife breastfed them all. They sucked her dry. There's a lot to this, but a woman gives her life. But then raising those children, and this is why I get it. A lot of guys don't want to do it because the risk is so high. The risk is so high and the institution is not stable, right? So I'm not preaching, I'm not telling you what to do, but this is the way of the superior man is to give his life for more life. That's what generative means, to generate, create generations. But you could also create generations and be generative with your art, right? Every time I give a piece of myself to this camera and deliver a piece of my consciousness to the world, a part of me dies, it's vulnerable. Because if I say something that someone don't like or it's taken out of context or used against me, it literally is me killing myself. Ah! So there's no way around this, my friend. You want to continue rolling and wrestling and doing what you do with other guys on a mat with this medical condition. If you're gonna do it, do it all the way because you love the thing that much. I was a kid playing football and I loved it so much I would have been paralyzed because I wanted to do my duty, I wanted to do the damn thing. So this is very natural. You, but you gotta decide whether or not it's worth it. And that's where priorities come in. And I can't give you priorities. I can't tell you priorities. I don't know what else you have going on in your life. If this is what you have going on in your life, don't let anyone tell you this is all you've got going on in your life. If this is your heart and soul, weightlifting and rolling, then let it fucking kill you. Done.